Welcome to the second part in our video series on value of information analysis and health technology assessment. In this video, we're going to talk about the expected value of perfect parameter information. Let's go. So the expected value of perfect parameter information from parameter gamma is defined as follows. That is the expected value with perfect parameter information on gamma minus the expected value without that perfect information. So you'd be just going and picking the right treatment with only knowledge of the average outcome that you go and have. Where we define each of these terms as follows. Again, what's really happening here is that you're observing this probability uh, first and then you're going and best responding. That'll be seen on the next couple of slides. Just in terms of notation, we're going to denote gamma as the parameter which we could observe, phi as the index for all other uncertain variables such that phi is in this set of theta, which is all states of the world without gamma, which is this observed state of the world when we're considering the expected value with perfect parameter information. And J is a particular treatment from a list of possible treatments J. Note that if gamma is the exact same as theta, that means our observed state of the world is going to be the same as the universe of all sets, then our expected value of perfect parameter information is going to be the same thing as our expected value with perfect information. So we like to calculate the statistic because it identifies the value of doing some inspection before going and making a decision, like in the case of medical testing. As said in the previous video, this is a lot to take in. So let's consider a simple decision tree with two treatments and four states of the world. So the expected value without perfect information is just going and being written as follows, where we just have, you know, two treatments, treatment A and treatment B. And it feeds into this decision tree where you face one layer of uncertainty and then another layer of uncertainty. And usually we just go and fold this decision tree back and we pick the option which has the highest expected outcome here. Now, I'm gonna go and give each one of these labels here. The first set of nodes we're gonna go and define as gamma and the second, set of nodes we're going to define as phi1 and phi2. And the reason why we're going to go and do this is because we're going to go and ask, what if we had some knowledge about the state of the world that we go and we have, but we still remained ignorant of the list of outcomes that we could go and get? What would we go and have here? So what we effectively go and do is that we pull this chance node, gamma, and we pull it to the back when we start going and talking about the expected value of perfect parameter information, then we go and make a decision with respect to each of our treatments with these outcomes in mind. So again, this computation is a average that we go and ha have here, just that we're best responding over these reduced uh, expectations here because these expectations have their uncertainty reduced because we pull this layer back here. So again, it's like what we've done in our expected value of perfect information, just that here we've only removed one layer here, right? In our previous example, we've just looked at a simple decision tree, but here we're just removing one aspect of uncertainty because you go and observe that state of nature here. So. I'm not going to go and uh, get into the computation of this result, but just at the very least to go and understand what this equa equation is, that I think is uh, worthy in and of itself. In the next video, we're going to be talking about these value of information curves that I was talking about in the first video and talk about cases when we can go and have kinks in them. So I'll see you guys in that video. Take care.